CataractCoach.com. Save this run out Capsular Rexus. Tough case here. Into mess and white cataract. Let's watch the video. So starting off, Tripan Blue Dye was used to stain the capsule and starting off with the double Rexus technique. So there's a lot of fluid coming out that lends milk. Again, we sometimes like to do an aspiration of it. But you can also do just a double Rexus. So quickly and efficiently make a small baby capsule Rexus. And that's just so you can get the fluid out. It doesn't have to be perfect or regular. And once that baby capsule Rexus is done, then you can really decompress the capsule bag, get all the liquefied lens material out, and then you can enlarge it and make your big Rexus. So again, grabbing that there and completing the first baby Rexus. I like that idea. So double Rexus technique always works well. And completed. So now what you can do is really rock that nucleus, do some gentle hydrodissection to flush out any um, liquefied lens cortex that's behind there and really decompress the capsule bag. Now you can cut it with the scissors and now you can enlarge the capsule rexus. So going in now, more viscoelastic, but be careful, right? This capsule rexus now can run out and there it does. And now it's run out all the way. Can you bring it back in? Well, the surgeon here is going to go in the opposite direction and make another cut and now continue the rexus this way. So you have that one area that's irregular. Now it did radialize out there and you could be in some trouble. Don't let that rip around to the posterior capsule. So phaco probe going inside here. Interesting positioning of the infusion holes on this irrigating sleeve. Hmm, so that, that, that makes me nervous right there. So hopefully the capsule is still intact. Let's see, this nucleus can be chopped. So the central core of the nucleus has some density to it. And again, do you see how it looks so empty now? So I think after the first rectus was done, a little bit more flushing out of the liquefied lens cortex would have been a good idea here. And so now chopping it more, obviously it's easier to be the armchair quarterback, as we say in the U.S., meaning that, you know, it's easy to sit in my chair and watch this video and say what I could have, should have done, but... I think the surgeon is doing a very nice job. So we're all here just to learn, not to criticize. Taking down that nucleus, again, as you do this, keep an eye out in that one quadrant, that top of your screen there, a little bit out of our view. You just want to make sure that that's not going to rip around to the posterior. Because if that does or that extends, you could drop these nuclear pieces in the vitreous cavity. So again, nice chop technique here, taking these uh, nuclear pieces down. And then what would you do for a lens here? Would you do your standard single piece in the bag? Would you try to do a three-piece lens, which gives you a few more options? Perhaps if upon eye wall insertion, the capsule rips open more or there's less support? All reasonable options here. So again, now taking these last couple of pieces down. And again, as you do this, I'd set up the scope here and I'd look at that one area just to make sure. And in fact, once this last piece comes out of the eye, I would tell you, don't let the anterior chamber collapse. Use your second hand to inject a viscoelastic as you pull the, the probe out of the eye. Keep the probe in position one and then and pull out the probe while you inject uh, OVD. Here are the last couple pieces. It looks like the capsule miraculously is still intact. That's pretty darn good, you know. It's, it's a very nice outcome. And think of the before and after. This patient went from essentially zero vision with that white cataract to coming out with great vision. So here it is, the end. Let's see. Cortex removal, be very cautious in that one area. Here's where a bimanual approach sometimes can be easier to give you a little bit more access and you can separate that infusion from the aspiration. But um, yeah, let's get that lens in here. Again, things can still go south. You can't, uh, can't assume you're okay at this point. You gotta be very cautious. Filling the bag with viscoelastic here, let's get that lens in. And it looks fortunately like that Rexus run out area is holding up pretty nicely. Here comes the lens. Okay, single piece acrylic, 7L rule. There's the 7, good job. There's the, uh, the optic, and there's the, the capital letter L. So 7L rule is intact. You have the anti-S configuration. Get that in the bag completely. Again, try to avoid too much more manipulation. So this is a case where you want to just kind of get out of Dodge, get out of town, just get this case done and just go get out of there. And when you rotate it like this, gosh, it just makes it kind of disappear. I'd rotate it so that the Hapics are 90 degrees away from that one area. See, I wouldn't leave the one haptic in that area. Ooh, tough case. You know what? All worked out fine in the end. I'm sure the patient was very pleased with this outcome. 
And it's a good learning case for all of us. Thank you.